Favor say I. Yeah.
Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for coming to Student Government Day and, oh, <laughs> we're in session. Again, thank you so much for coming, and hello to everybody in the audience. It's been a wonderful opportunity to come and shadow everybody here at the government and City Hall. Today we're going to start with our first item on the agenda, the work session. But there's no work session this afternoon, so you are all in luck. Um, item number two is a public dialogue session, which we don't have, so we're going to skip through that too. Now we're going to call to order. I'd like to call this city council meeting for April 12th, 2024 to order. And now on to item number four, a roll call. I'm going to call to order. Um, Mayor Mordano. Here. Assistant Mayor Douglas. Here. Councilor Harrison. Here. Councilor Weinreb. Here. Councilor Coffee. Here. Councilor Delaney. Here. Councilor Tapscott. Here. Councilor Akalanu. Here. Councilor Ramirez. Here. Perfect. And now I would like to ask everyone to join me in a moment of silent prayer. Thank you. Now please, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now we will speak about the acceptance of minutes. Is there a motion to accept and approve the minutes of the April 19th, 2023 Student Government Day meeting? Motion to accept. Motion to accept? Perfect. Wait. Someone second. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> Nay opposed. Nay opposed. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'd like to recognize our volunteer committee reports. First and foremost, World Awareness Week, Portsmouth High School, next week. Please, please, please come to everything that we will be hosting. There will be meetings, there will be presentations on countries and experiences that people have. I will be presenting there, so I would love for you guys to come. And I'll be speaking on Spain. So it'll be a good opportunity for you to have exposed um, exposition to the outside world and other cultural experiences. We would also like to thank Stan Lyford, the girls track and field coach, for all of his hard work that he's put in these past couple of years and for creating, yes, thank you. Now, personally, I've never had Mr. Lyford as a teacher, but every interaction that I've had with him have just been great. He's an amazing person and teacher all around, and all of my friends say that he's one of the best math teachers that they've ever had. And we would also like to have a moment of silence for a couple of past, uh, people that have passed away within the Portsmouth School District. Jim Nevins, Ed McPherson, and Richard Parker. We would also like to thank Joe Krause, the um, debate team leader at Portsmouth High School, for taking the debate team onto a Harvard national debate, which is something that has not been done regularly in the past, and his hard work has really gone into opening the doors for the debate team. Thank you. And last but not least, we would like to thank the Wheelers for all of their hard work and dedication that have gone into organizing this event. Thank you so much. So now we will open the floor to public comment sessions.
Thank you. The floor will now be opened to Miles Bourne, hailing from Rye, New Hampshire, on the topic of free ponies for all. <laughs> oh, hot. Hi, Miles Born 431 Wallace Road. Today I'm talking to you about a very pressing need, free ponies for all. You may have heard my fellow advocacy leader, Vernon Supreme. While I heavily support his ideas in bringing free ponies nationwide, I believe that the best way to start it up is grassroots. And I believe that the city of Portsmouth has the ish, has the resources, and has the materials to do it. Free ponies for all is basically the idea, as it says, anyone that wants a pony can get a free pony. It's as simple as that. So you may be asking, why is this relevant at all? But here's the simple answer. Because ponies increase recreation. They make people get outside. They make people do simple tasks such as, I don't know, cleaning the litter. They make people do things such as spending time with their pony. By having a pet study, experts have shown that has increased residents' mental health drastically. So it is very, very important that we do free ponies for all. And then you may be wondering, why ponies? The simple answer is ponies are awesome. If you can't agree with that, then I don't know who you are simply. But what we need to do is I need you to have free ponies for all because if Portsmouth does not take initiative on this leave, other cities will. And you know what will look like? A straggler that is not willing to take action because we can't do anything. So we need to get this done immediately and effectively. And if we don't get this done today, I will be very disappointed. So please give free ponies for all. Keep talking because they're timing you. So oh. They want the buzzer to go off on you. Keep talking. Oh, keep talking. Oh, so I got to keep on blabbing. Um, but anyway, so as you all know, free ponies need to happen right now, especially Councillor Coffee. You need to have free ponies for all. Free ponies, as you have seen, the benefits of having a pet yourself. You have seen what it has done, how much it has increased your mental health, and the true relationships you can form with an animal. And simply, we need free ponies for all. Free ponies is probably the best idea that I have heard and single-handedly in my 16 years of living in existence. We need free ponies for all. We also need to raise awareness to Vernon Supreme, a political leader that's fighting the right fight to get free ponies for all. Even though he may wear a boot on his head, we need free ponies for all. I don't understand how it can be more complicated than that. So you need to pass an ordinance to increase the recreation's ability to have these facilities to host free ponies for all and make it a common experience that all city residents can share. Because when you have a common experience of having a pony and living with a pony, you can tell how much that brings bonds together. For example, if you have a class, you tend to be friendly with the person you have a class with. It's the same idea as someone who has a pony. So we need you and all the city council members to urge and have free ponies for all because truly this is the only way forward and the only way to make Portsmouth the best city that it truly can be. Thank you, Miles. I really liked your idea. <laughs> I think we all did, actually. Where are you going to put the ponies? That's true. Should we question him? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Move on to the next Two questions. Next, person. Okay, next up, we have Tommy Blanchard, hailing from the city of Portsmouth, on a scavenger hunt topic. My friends, today I'm here to talk to you about history. It is my belief that history is the most vital aspect of our society. Without history, we cannot learn. We cannot face our future without knowing about our past. It is my belief that among the youth of this city, that idea has not been accurately assessed. It is my belief that in this new generation, we are not seeing the love of history and the necessity that it takes to truly learn. And I wish to remedy this. So I wish to propose to the council a scavenger hunt. I wish to pick out the sites around Portsmouth that are extremely important to our history, where we've done, like for example, the Treaty of Portsmouth, which was signed in Maine, but there are places around here. There's the YMCA, YMCA of the Seacoast, for example, where delegates went 
where they went to exercise, to play, and have fun. And there is, Portsmouth is 400 years old now. There are places that we must learn so we can learn for the future. This will give children better understanding of their future, better knowledge of how to accurately assess the past. And so it is my hope that in the scavenger hunt, I will have your support, perhaps on the Instagram, perhaps create a, a web page. Anything of the sort would be very useful in this endeavor. For example, take, I'll give you some examples of what I hope to accomplish. I hope to accomplish, especially among Little Harbor and the middle school, because I think personally that in the high school, by that time, everyone's pretty much has a good knowledge of history. But usually they've already decided whether or not they like it, and they've already tuned out most of the things. So I wish to instill from an early age a sense of curiosity and a sense of love of learning, not just of history, but everything. I want them to look at a house. Take my house, for example. My house is over 200 years old. I want them to look at that house and realize that look at it and say, that house was there 200 years ago. I wish for them to fully be able to assess that. And that may be beyond you know, the limits of what a middle school or what an elementary school student can do. But it's my belief that with good enough time and effort and with fun things like a scavenger hunt, that can be done. I thank you for your time, even though I've got 30 seconds left. <laughs> But I thank you for your time, and I thank you for listening to my speech. And again, it is my hope that with your support, we can accurately and effectively help make sure that history is known. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Next up, we have Rich Blaylock. <laughs> Blaylock, Blaylock, from Portsmouth on the topic of thank you student government. Thank you, Mayor, Assistant Mayor, uh, City Council, City Attorney, City Clerk. Um, Rich Blaylock, 922 Greenland Road. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for participating in Student Government Day. Um, we can set up Student Government Day, but it really doesn't mean anything unless you guys show up, sign up, participate, um, actively engage and uh, show up here today. So I just want to thank all the students for representing us today and taking care of our city for the day and all the department heads. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Ian Franis from Portsmouth speaking on student advocacy initiatives. Uh, how does this thing work? Oh, cool. Um, thank you, Council, for being uh, here and letting me speak for approximately three minutes. Um, I, won't like, I don't like to waste your time, so I'll just get to it, even though I've already wasted 10 seconds. Um, like many students, I'm grateful to be here today. Uh, and I'm so thankful for the opportunity to come here and understand the functionings of government, be able to shadow someone. Many of you on the council have obviously understood that this is a really important aspect of our town and of our culture. Um, as ideals expressed by uh, uh, Council Blaylock and our mayor, this one day has proven to be so beneficial, not just for the students, but for city workers as well. Public comment is crucial to a functioning city. To a functioning city. Without input, our citizens' issues would go unaddressed and would stay unresolved. That is why we must encourage all of our citizens to voice their opinions, input, and expertise so that we can assess pressing issues and diversify our responses. But Portsmouth has a glaring issue we severely lack in student input. Currently, this one day serves as the functioning core to allow students to input their advice and address it. Although there are sessions regularly held weekly, many students do not feel that their advocacy in uh, this committee will be heard. I feel that's why it is important for the City Council to address these issues and increase their incentives to outreach towards public students. Not only saying that students can address these issues and students can address their advices and advocate for themselves, but that students should. That students should go out there and that they should heavily encourage this. 
This can be through internship programs. This could be through a regular held council meeting specifically for students, setting the agenda for students, reaching out to high schools, uh, reaching out to middle school to see what students have to say. I feel that student outreach has been severely un unaddressed and one day a year, although highly effective, has yet to address some of the uh, numerous concerns that our students have. Thank you, that is my uh, speech. For the remaining minute of my time, I would like to go back to Miles' topic of free ponies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, thank you, council members, and have a great day. Thank you, Ian, and I agree with him. I feel like the topic of free ponies for everyone should be a serious council topic. Next up, we have Marlon Pinto from Greenland on school funding. Thank you all. So my topic is about school funding, but more specifically, a general fund that can be provided for both students and staff to access. So right now, we do, you know, there is plenty of funding to the school department, as Mr. McLaughlin said earlier this morning. Um, but there's no general fund that both students and staffs can apply to if they want to initiate a project or purchase new equipment that's outside of their department, or if they just need excess money that's not available to them. We have the Clipper Fund, which people can apply to earlier in the school year, as well as the Opportunity Fund for those who are um, unable to afford certain you know, programs. But they don't allow everybody to apply to a general fund. So what I'm proposing is the idea of a general fund that individuals in both um, the high school, middle school, and our elementary schools can apply to to receive funding for their projects that they might have. So let's talk about staffs, for example. So department budgets are limited. You know, they don't have an infinite amount of money that they can use to spend on, let's say, new equipment, or if there's a new experience they'd like to try out. And by having this general fund that they can apply to, they could purchase that new equipment, they can do new projects, and it could increase the amount of experiences that students can experience with. Furthermore, it can expand curriculums, it could provide greater opportunities, it could really further the educational experience that students have at Portsmouth, which is what we really take pride in. What do our students have the opportunity to learn about? You know, we have all the programs in CTE in our science wing, math wing, social studies, but these type of funds could greatly you know, increase the experience that these students have. But let's talk about students. One of the biggest impacts this um, fund could have is on extracurriculars. For example, Aerospace Engineering Club. It's a new club started at PHS, but a primary issue we're facing is lack of funding. Now, of course, we you know fundraising is always an option, but it's difficult to fundraise as a you know fresh out of the you know fresh out of the water club. And ultimately, money is needed for research, development of literally anything in this type of club. So having a general fund where we could apply to would be greatly beneficial. But what is the importance of this? Why should we just be able to apply for money? Why is this money is important? Ultimately, higher work, you know, a higher quality of work can be done both on the academic level as well as this extracurricular level. Furthermore, more clubs could be created because with a seed fund that students can have, it allows them to you know, do what they'd like to do, which is what really clubs are all about. There's so many clubs and these are only started based on you know, what the students are interested in. And if students aren't able to have adequate funding and trying to figure out, hey, I'd like to start a club on something they're interested in, let's say aerospace engineering, for example, without that funding, it won't take off and it won't grow into something that you know, they have um, through the rest of their high school careers, which is why I'd like to propose this and I would love for this to come to uh, fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Marlon. Next, we have public hearings and voting on ordinance and our resolutions. The first public hearing we have is the Market Square redevelopment issue. You want me to? It's yours. Who's? Uh, I'll just start it off. Um, I envision Market Square as a place being designed for pedestrians. Um, the use of mechanical ballards would prohibit ordinary vehicles to travel through Market Square other than during the hours of 7 to 9 a.m. Um, and emergency vehicles and trash cleanup crews would have sensors in their vehicles allowing for the ballard, ballards to move up and down, which would keep the pedestrian flow moving but allow for emergency vehicles to go through. Um, that's what I'll start this off. Your discussion? So we'll move to the next topic. <laughs> now we're going to speak on city manager items that require action, starting with city manager Paul. Hello, 
I am requesting a use of funds from the opioid settlement to increase education surrounding Narcan availability. Um, to speak on this, um, we obviously know that um, fentanyl is rising scarily, and I feel like in schools uh, and just in the general public, we are not educated enough, and Narcan is not distributed enough. So with this, um, I'm asking um, for funds to increase education surrounding it. Okay, so motion to move this and refer to the city manager with authority to act. Everyone in favor? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay opposed. I think I'm getting the hang of this, guys, slowly. Okay, next we have a proper motion to adopt for adoption of consent agenda. So motion to adopt the consent agenda. Motion. Motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's right, he seconded the motion. So we're good. Yeah. Those all in favor. Nay opposed. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. With presentations and written communications, we're going to do a presentation on the feasibility of jumping off the Sycamore Bridge. Yes, so Recreation Director, would you mind speaking about that? <laughs> um, so I'm presenting about the presentation about feasibility on jumping off Sagamore Bridge. I want to start off with a few facts. People are only going to do it no matter what. If it's illegal, if it's not illegal, people are going to jump off. You can't stop that. So we might as well make use of it and make it safe. If you make something legal, you can regulate it. If it's illegal, you just say, don't do it. But at least if it's legal, you can regulate it. You can say, hey, you should maybe only jump when it's safe to jump during high tide. But now people are gonna just jump whenever they, whenever they want, and if they're not caught, they get away with it. But at least if you have the laws and the regulations for the safe practices, you can make it safer. And I think that jumping off Sagamore Bridge can actually be a very fun activity to do. As we have seen, if you look at nearby towns such as Rye during Rye Harbor, because Rye Harbor is safe and fun, you see people during the summer to cool off, they go to the Rye Harbor Bridge and they jump off of it because it's a fun and neat activity to do. But the Sagamore Bridge, which is a great spot to do it, is currently, as you know, illegal. So that's why we think that making it legal and allowing people to actually jump off it could happen I understand there's the risk of ability, but the idea is once something is legal, you can regulate it. And once you can regulate it, you can make it safer. You can add laws, you can add regulations. And I'm not an expert on all the safety. That's why other people such as public safety and health and department also, and scientific experts to say when it's actually high enough, I can't really do that. But the scientists can say, okay, we know when it's safe and we can actually regulate when it's safe because usually, once you can make sure that something is safe and you allow people to do it, it's a lot less risky compared to people getting injured. You can also have them sign waivers saying if they get hurt, the city's not liable because they're aware of the risk and stuff. So that idea is the city is not sued for any of this because I know that's another major concern about legality. But people signed waivers or there was some way to make them aware that the city's not liable. It would be a great addition to the recreation department allowing people to have fun because after all, the point of rec is to allow people to have fun and take advantage of Portsmouth as great natural resources, such as Sagamore Bridge, which is an amazing resource. So again, for making it actually safe to jump off Sagamore Bridge, we need to make it feasible and allow it to happen. And yeah. Thank you, Miles. So I'd like to take a little backtrack because I just realized that I skipped a motion. So I would like to move to adopt the consent agenda. Motion for it. Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. So now I would like to request permission to hold a farmer's market in Market Square. I'm supposed to give the presentation on Motion to approve. 
I don't like there's a presentation. There's, on this. there's no presentation. <gasps> Perfect. So motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lost right now. You're fine. <laughs> Okay, so then we're going to double skip forward and move on to a presentation of Skip the Stuff. Okay, so city council members, you have a packet in front of you, and I know you may have, may have heard of this before, but we have a little bit of cha change of verbiage in the Skip the Stuff. Originally, it was an ordinance. Now we're shifting to more of a policy. Um, and the purpose of this policy is to reduce the distribution of single-use foodware so that customers may order food and beverages without receiving unnecessary and unrequested single-use food serviceware. So it's having customers opt in instead of opting out. Um, and this policy would also support waste reduction efforts, which is, which is goal of the State of New Hampshire 2024 Climate Action Plan and the forthcoming Portsmouth Climate Action Plan. Um, and this policy encourages businesses to only dis distribute single-use food serviceware upon request. So not only is it limiting the amount of waste, um, but also it will save businesses in the long run um, money as they're not purchasing as many of these single-use plastics. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. I have a quick question. How will this be regulated with, amongst restaurants? So because of the shift between an ordinance to a policy, there isn't actually any, um, there wouldn't be any enforcement to it. It would be more of an education campaign um, with help from the Portsmouth High School Environmental Club as well as the Health Department. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Now, we are to my section of the agenda, and I have two items that require action this evening. I would like to have a motion to appoint Sage Brassier to the Recreation Board. Motion to appoint. Someone second. Maria, second. Oh, I, I second this motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay opposed. <laughs> Perfect. And so I would also like to request from the Recreation Board and Recreation Department for a report back on increasing city-sponsored activities for youth, including the cost and feasibility. I believe that a community is based on integration and working together. And in order to have a stronger community, the youth, which will be part of our community now and the future of Portsmouth, they must come together and focus on that organization and aspect of community. So that's why I've decided to request the um, city-sponsored activities for youth. Okay, now we're on to the city members. So Assistant Mayor Douglas, we are to your item. Um, I'm asking for a report back on a work session with the planning board regarding solar canopies as I feel it is super important that we look into this as we are one of the only cities that haven't thought about this or put it into a plan. Um, if you go travel across especially California but look at other states as well, um, solar canopies are pretty common um, especially in an area that is so um, well built for something like this. So I'm asking that we report back and have a work session with the planning board um, regarding implementing these solar canopies. Um, yeah. I'm also asking for a report back on the cost of retractable ballers for Market Square. I know that Councillor Delaney mentioned this before, but um, I want to look specifically on the cost of these ballers and how we could best implement them into Market Square. So, motion. Oh, wait. Do you do that? No, Mo okay. So, no, it's me. Motion to move to refer to the Public Works Director for a report back. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Nay opposed. <laughs> Councillor Harrison, you have one item this afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about the um, fixing up the softball fields in town. Um, so I'm asking to um, take money, take 250000 out of the capital improvement plan to um, better improve our fields. Um, I've talked to um, staff about recre recreation staff about this and um, they also agree that mo many of our fields in town need um, updating yes so mo yeah question well, we need a motion and discussion oh it is a motion 
motion to amend the capital improvement plan to spend two hundred fifty thousand um, to upgrade the softball field. I second the motion. All in favor? Discussion. Discussion. Let's do discussion. Okay, I second the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Okay, all in favor. Great. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> no, there needs to be discussion yeah. on the matter. Just discussion on the matter, please. The floor has been opened. <laughs> Does anybody have anything to say? Uh, are there fields in specific specific softball fields that you wish to improve? Um, Clow field. Honestly, just all of the fields. Alumni needs to be fixed. Um, Clow field, the one at Lister, and both of the Tony Ron fields out in Pease. How long is this going to take? Well, it just, um, we don't have a specific time of how long it'll take, probably. So about, I would say, a year. Do you guys have any sort of plan? Just really to fix them up, because they're very rough right now. They just need a lot of help. Yeah. I have a question. Yep. So with the activities that are currently being held on these fields, where are the children going to go? Because there's going to be a major displacement of these activities. Um, well, there's, we also have indoor space as well. You can go in the gym, so um, just for like practice and stuff, but um, I don't have a place right now to put them. Thank you. $250,000, is that a redirection from another sector or is it an increase in $250,000? Um, I was hoping to take money out of the capital improvement plan okay. to um, make the softball fields better. <laughs> Could okay, you, is that all for questions? Could you quickly clarify what capital improvement plan you're talking about and where you're taking that money from? Um, <clears throat> um, well, the capital improvement plan is money that we have to improve fields around like yeah just improve um the town <laughs> the recreation and around the town any other questions solid idea i'll give it to you <laughs> so now we vote now we vote now we vote now we can vote on the topic all in favor Someone has to be a motion. Okay. Wait, no, there's already a motion on the floor. Okay, yeah. so someone has to second. <laughs> Anyone second it? You second it. You second it. So now we're in discussion. And now you closed. <laughs> the mayor, the mayor seconded the motion. I would like to now close this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> now move to vote. Now we will move to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay opposed? <laughs> Nay. Oh. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. oh no. $50,000. Ooh. Guys, this wasn't in the planning. I don't know what to do if something somebody opposes. Like, do we kick them off? Do we? Oh, we continue. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Oh, and you got saved there. I almost kicked you out of the room. $50,000. True, true. Okay, so moving on to the next topic. Let's see. Councillor Weinrub, you have a policy for action this afternoon. Yes. I would like to make a motion to expand and increase the funding for the bike ped plan. Um, currently, our city can be seen as uh, being pretty divided. We have um, a secluded population um, from their jobs because of where they look, um, live. Those who do not have access to cars um, may have a hard time getting to work because of the ways um, our city is, is designed currently. So um, I'm hoping that we can expand the funding so that we can have more bike paths and safer um, travel for those who need it um, to get around the city, as well as um, addressing the climate concerns. Um, having people bike and walk to work and get around town is much more efficient, um, and it's also safer and better for the climate um, as less greenhouse gases are emitted. Um, so the solution is um, that we emit $100,000 in the fiscal year 2025, um, put that into the budget, 
and this will lead to traffic calming or nope we can as part of a solution we can include traffic calming um, and the safety will go up um, for the bikers and walkers and it'll help fix congestion um, and health issues biking is much safer or is much more healthy for you so yeah are there any questions is this uh, money coming out of like another sector um no we would be adding this on and we would have to include it in next year's budget that would be included in the capital improvement plan correct okay perfect so do i vote for this one i think there has to be a motion <laughs> Okay, moving on to the next topic. Um, <laughs> vote? Yeah. All in favor? Nope. No nope. second motion. There has to be a motion. Yep. <laughs> Was there ever an official motion made? Yeah, I made a motion. Okay, so someone's. That's a second. I second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> All we gotta vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay opposed. Perfect. <laughs> Councilor Delaney, you have one item this afternoon. Yes, so I'd like to make a request for an RFQ for indoor for an indoor sports facility behind Portsmouth High School. Um, I have talked to Cause, the athletic director, about this, um, and it would be an indoor facility behind Portsmouth High School that could provide indoor training throughout the off season for all of our, our athletic teams. Um, it could be the it could be lined with turf that could allow for our spring baseball and softball teams to train it could also allow for our football team to train it could allow for, it could allow for all of our teams to train in there um so i would like to, to make a request for an rfq for this facility perfect now i would like to second that motion can we have discussion open yeah. for discussion yeah. Ooh. Ooh. um so would the facility include like an indoor track and stuff like that or like and also how much is this going to cost so that's why i'm making a request for an rfq because we don't know how much it's going to cost okay. um but right now the plan is not to have an indoor track just because we don't have that size back there to do that um that would also require to take out a lot more trees and area back there to make that facility rather than if we just made indoor turf um and then maybe some other stuff on the side um, would we be losing anything um, due to this being built? L by losing what? what losing land or space that we needed or used? No, we would have to take out um, uh, sh shrubbery behind the high school <laughs> uh, to to make to make this facility a possibility. Um, but in terms of what we would be losing, we wouldn't we wouldn't be losing anything. Behind the high school, do you mean like by the? Um, by the softball field and everything where the like it would be to the left of the tennis course if you're facing the tennis courts so yeah, the where course. the adventure course currently is or yes yeah, so it would be like in that um behind the adventure course there are but do we do we own that land do you, or actually i should not because it's too um <laughs> but, <laughs> um <coughs> what do you have a plan for that portion of your plan what like where like what part of land or if any purchasing of land would be needed that, that's our land that's not that's not our land it is okay yes okay. i believe we have a staffing issue um at the high school currently especially with janitorial services how do you plan on um addressing that um in terms of cleanup it would be there wouldn't be any food allowed in there um and it would just need vacuuming once a week on the turf area but it should not um after it's built it should not take that much maintenance to keep it up and running no um and we would also have to trust our athletic teams to take the responsibility for their actions if they do um cause damage to the facility i'm aware that multiple sports teams like practice in that area where the facility is said to be built so um how are you going to address that displacement um we would work around where teams are practicing right now but um in terms of 
where we would place the facility, it would still be behind Porch of High School. Um, and if track is in the way, we will figure out um, how to not disrupt that um, practice routine. How much time do you estimate that this is going to take to build? Um, hopefully it would be done. It, hope, we're hoping to start um, if we were able to get the, well, we don't know how much it's going to cost yet, so we uh, we have not even um, begun to like find contractors and plan when this will be built. So right now, I don't have an answer for you. Will this facility be open to the public? Um, if they talk to our athletic director um, and they can find time to work in there, it will be unlocked for them. Um, but as of now, the plan is to, the priority would be our Porch with High School teams. And then beyond that, um, if other teams are able to practice in there and they contact our athletic department, um, then we can hopefully figure something out. But right now, the priority is our Porch with High School athletic teams. Would teams be able to play in that um, facility in during season if it was raining? No, it would it would not be that big. It would it would be specifically for training. Um, I know for softball there would be batting cages mm -hmm. in areas where you could pitch and you grab balls and all that stuff. But in terms of height and the size, it would not be big enough to supply a game. No. Would this be impeding on any of the trails behind the high school or cause for like a rerouting situation? No, it would not. Any other questions? Right, okay, so has the motion already been motioned? Yes. So I'd like to second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay opposed? Nay. No. I'm also saying nay. And I nay believe, or I, nay opposed, so. I believe this is just a request. Um, do I need to make a motion? Oh, this is just a request. Yeah, I don't think we need to vote. Oh. Yeah. I, I, there's no motion on the table. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Councillor Akanalu, you have one item this afternoon. Um, so, a report back uh, from the fire department on expansion of um, EMS programs through the high school. Um, and also a motion for incentives for the community to, um, well, a motion to incentivize the community to get more entry level healthcare um, education. So that would mean like things like um, maybe paying people to take a four month course to get their EMT like pay them while they're studying and then um, seamlessly transfer them into like the fire department so that they can, you know, work. Um, or um, have programs to help people get their LNAs or CNAs um, because as of 2030, uh, Portsmouth will have about one sixth of the healthcare professionals that we actually like need um, to sustain the community. So what that will look like is that in terms of like doctor's appointments, it'll take you maybe like four or five months just to get a physical. Um, in terms of like emergency, um, it would take you a long, long time if like maybe say a family member were having a heart attack. Like I know the emergency departments are already like very much understaffed. It would take them a lot longer to actually get to you. So there's like a lot of like risk for higher mortality rates because of that missing link. Would like to open for discussion. Oh, can I get a second motion on that, please? Yeah. What, what is your second motion? Second to motion. Motion can, to yeah. give people money to what? learn. Would your motion be to um, expand EMS classes throughout high school education? Is that um, uh, this is just a the first one is just a request for a report back. Okay. So, but the second the one is actually a motion to pay people money 
to get their EMTs, EMT certification, or like advanced EMT certification, and then continue to pay them as they work for our fire department. Okay. Um, I have a quick question for your report. Uh, your your uh, request for a report. Um, would you want those classes to be um, like included in our CTE program? Are you like we already have a health sciences program? Um, I know I've talked to the teacher of the health sciences program, um, where he's thinking of expanding to the point where like not just like get more high schoolers involved because I think it's like a really good program so that you could like start working and like contributing to the community at such an early age, but also um, uh, expanding by maybe build, uh, adding later on in time to the high school, like um, a reduced like income clinic so that um, participants in this program can get hands-on experience um, and do their rotations without having to leave the high school. And then the community is also served um, by, if you, don't, if you don't have maybe health insurance or can't like afford regular treatments, like you can come in, get a checkup, or come in and, um, yeah, you know what I mean. What grade level would this be taught at? Um, so the CTE course right now is, you start HST1, I know you have to be at least a sophomore, um, to start the first year. And so this is from, you'll probably get your certification when you're 17 or 18. So um, all the students are mature enough to actually like understand like what this means and the gravity of like the situations that will be presented to them. You talked about people getting paid during the program. Yes. Where would that money come from? Um, so a lot of hospitals actually and uh, cities and municipalities already do this. Um, where um, they either create a separate fund or take money out of like their public health budget um, to have this. And would you have to pay to get into the program? No. So um, it's just like, okay. say for example, um, we have it through Great Bay Community College. I mean, Great Bay, you do have to like pay to take the course. Um, but if, let's say we had it through our fire departments, um, whoever pays the po uh, fire department will be paying the people taking this course as well. And then the, um, once they finish their course, they will have to have like a two or three year commitment to work at our fire department, right? So they're not gonna just like get the course, um, pass, get paid and like dip. You stated this would be sophomores. Does it pertain to the Portsmouth High School curriculum? Yes. Does so this panel have jurisdiction to monitor the curriculum of Portsmouth High School? Um, not necessarily the curriculum. Um, I mentioned sophomores because we already have a health sciences program at the high school. So that was just in terms of like potentially expanding that. But does this panel have the jurisdiction to implement educational courses in Portsmouth High School? Do we? Do so we have to be included in our school in our school board yeah. budget yeah. to school include board. this in our classes. Um, and as of now, no. this is not under the jurisdiction of this yeah. council. It would have to be for the school board. Um, what I'm saying is that the classes already exist. I'm just saying maybe having like additions not to the curriculum itself or to the courses, just expanding the area where the classes can take place. So meaning that there are more places um, to practice hands-on skills. Wouldn't this still be expanding the courses though? And expanding the- You're not actually service? expanding the curriculum. You're just expanding the space where the curriculum is taught. Okay, so you're taking Portsmouth High School courses and applying them to where? Um, so, in this case, the first one, um, I'm just trying to like get more high schoolers interested in like getting their EMT certifications. So that just means like um, it's a report back on expansion. Um, so that would mean like the fire department getting kids interested on like a middle school level so that they walk into like Portsmouth High School 
saying, okay, I'm going to take intro to HST in my freshman year. I'm going to do go in my sophomore year and junior year and take HST 1 and 2. And then we, like, come out bringing, like, entry-level health care emergency uh, medical responders um, into the community. And then that, Would that not constitute as affecting the curriculum of the middle school then? How? It's literally just a presentation. No, but I'm just talking about the curriculum and the courses, if you're expanding them. We're not expanding the curriculum, we're just expanding the building. Okay. Any other questions? So I second to second the motion. The motion's already been opened. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, Councillor Ramirez, we are on to your item of the agenda. Um, I would like to report back on affordable housing costs and how they're reflecting the cost of living. Um, I know right now that the limits for to be eligible for affordable housing is like quite narrow. Um, right now, like a single person, um, single person, the max is around thirty thousand, which someone might not be able to live in Portsmouth for that amount of money. Same thing with families, and so I think we might need to look at the data and maybe increase the limits on that. Thank you. So now we are at the approval of grants and donations. So I would like to approve the acceptance of a tree on behalf of the Eco Club representatives. Congratulations, Eco Club representatives. <laughs> Now, City Manager Paul, we are at your portion of informal items. All right. May 5th, on Children's Day, the City of Portsmouth will be, be providing children, thanks to Rec Director Miles Bourne, we will be providing free ponies and free toothbrushes to every child in Portsmouth. <laughs> These are very expensive, so we'll have to budget for that, but. Just please remember the toothbrushes that you receive, they are not to be shared with your ponies. They should be separate, please. Does anybody have any miscellaneous business this afternoon? Okay. I request to adjourn the meeting. Second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay! Thank you.